Let's talk about inclusion body myositis. So this is the most common idiopathic inflammatory myopathy in adults over 50 years old. It affects men more commonly than women, which is unlike polymyositis. And characteristically, there can be years of progressive weakness before it comes to the attention of either the patient or the physician. And this weakness can be more asymmetric than some of the other myopathies. In terms of the clinical features, proximal leg weakness is characteristic, especially with quadriceps weakness. Patients may not be able to get out of a chair without using their arms. But what differentiates this from other myopathies is that there is distal arm weakness rather than proximal arm weakness. So 95% of these patients will have distal finger flexor weakness and a lot of them will also have wrist flexor weakness. Dysphagia is less common but it can still be the presenting symptom. The muscle atrophy is often very pronounced and there are no fasciculations. When labs are drawn, the ESR and CRP are normal. CK can either be normal or only mildly elevated, less than 10 times normal. It should not be greater than 15 times normal. Antibodies are not always drawn, but antibodies can uh, sometimes occur in this disease, and that'll be to cytoplasmic 5 nucleotidase 1A though note that this antibody also occurs in other autoimmune diseases, so it's not sp specific. The EMG is very important and it will show an irritable myopathy with increased insertional activity, fibrillations, and positive waves. There is also early recruitment of short duration, small amplitude polyphasic motor unit action potentials. The clinical features may not always clinch the diagnosis, so in those cases, muscle biopsy is done, and it will show sarcoplasmic rimmed vacuoles on Gomori trichrome stain. It will also show mononuclear cell infiltration of non-necrotic muscle fibers. So here you can see a rimmed vacuole, and here the mononuclear cell infiltrates. These will be T lymphocytes and macrophages. There can be myofiber degeneration, regeneration, and necrosis leading to variability of fiber size. And these muscle fibers will also immunostain for TDP43 and P62 protein aggregates. The treatment consists of physical therapy and occupational therapy as well as speech therapy if dysphagia is present. Regular exercise is important, and unfortunately no medication has been shown to be greatly effective in treatment. Sometimes steroids are used, if, especially if there is concern for other autoimmune disease or if the diagnosis is uncertain. For prognosis, this disease slowly progresses over many years. A minority do end up in wheelchairs. Uh, there is no association with malignancy or interstitial lung disease, unlike some of the other inflammatory myopathies.